for adding some flair to your home decor. When in his native Scotland, a deerhound can be seen straining at the leash as he sniffs the dewy air, gracefully bounding over the purple of his native hills, or lounging in the baronial hall, stretched out in luxurious length before the open hearth in the flickering light of the log fire that glistens on polished armor and tarnished tapestry. He does everything with grace and grandeur, and even the most cynical person can't deny that he has a magical air that reminds them of medieval poetry and romance. Scottish aristocrats have loved their deerhounds for centuries because they provide such spectacular sport in the highland woodlands. The red deer was the inalienable property of the Scottish monarchs, and during the reign of Queen Mary, large-scale drives spanning several days were organized to herd the deer into designated areas for the court's entertainment. During the Stuart Troubles, however, courtiers stopped hunting deer on a regular basis and gave the job to their retainers, who brought the game to the royal kitchens. Hey. The ideal proportions of a dog's head are for it to be wider around the ears and narrower around the eyes, with a sharper decline in width toward the nose on the snout. If you want to have a pointed muzzle but straight teeth and lips, then the muzzle should be sharp. The skull should be flat rather than circular, and the top of the head should be long with a little hump over the eyes but no discernible crest. The hair on the top of the head should be around shoulder length and softer than the rest of the coat. The nose should be somewhat aquiline and black, but in some blue fawns the color is blue. A black muzzle is preferred in dogs with lighter coat colors. A respectable beard and a good mustache made of somewhat smooth hair are expected. Ears the ears should be carried high and folded back like a greyhound's while at rest, but should be carried high above the head when excited without losing the fold and may even stand somewhat upright in certain circumstances. The ear, ideally, would be tiny, shiny, and feel like the fur of a mouse. There shouldn't be any long hair or fringe, but many people notice a silky, silvery sheen on the ear's body and tip. The ears should be black or a dark color regardless of the coat color. The head, the neck, and the shoulders. The dog's neck should be long in the sense that it should be befitting of a greyhound. Head placement emphasizes the nape of the neck, and an angular, prominent throat is ideal. Shoulder blades should be slightly retracted and not too far apart. Stern. The ideal length for a dog's sternum is between one and one and a half inches, with a little taper from the top of the hock to the ground. When the dog is still, lying flat on its back, or bending over at speed, it should bend when enthusiastic but never rise over the level of the back. The hair should cover most of it, being thick and wiry on the inside and lengthier on the bottom. Pies. Dark eyes, often a shade of brown or hazel, are preferred. The pupil is somewhat large, giving off a kind aspect and the dog is relaxed but a sharp, distant look when it's excited. Black makeup is recommended for eyelid rims. The physique and basic shape are similar to a bigger greyhound. More narrow and deep in the chest than wide and flat across the shoulders, the back was curved and sagged all the way to the tail. Reduced mobility in the lower extremities. It's preferable to have wide forearms and elbows and broad, flat legs. Please stand as erect as possible with your feet in front. Feet are close together and have a healthy arch sagging hips and a wide, muscular chest are signs of a strong back end. The hocks should be wide and flat, and the legs should be properly bent at the stifle. Coat In contrast to the soft hair on the head, breast, and belly, the hair on the torso, neck, and quarters should be roughly 3 to 4 inches long.
On the inside of the front and back legs, there should be a small fringe of hair, but not as much as on a collie. The ideal coat length for a deer hound is medium. Color. What we find aesthetically pleasing in terms of coloration varies widely. There is, however, zero room for debate on which color scheme is preferred, the dark blue-gray. The next most desirable color is the deepest gray or brindle, followed by lighter ones. A similar value is placed on the colors yellow and sandy red or red fawn, particularly when paired with black points, such as ears and snout. Height From around 28 to 30 inches, longer if symmetrical without being coarse, which is unusual. Bitches range in height from around 26 inches to above. Bitches may be as big as they like, so long as they aren't too coarse, even at their tallest, they're still shorter than the average dog, so they can't be physically too large for the job. <laughs>